Good evening from San Ignacio Town. With the 9 o'clock news, I am Patrick Jones. In the headlines, People's Coalition of Cayo makes donation to the San Ignacio Police. New officer commanding takes over at the San Ignacio Police Station. And the NTUCB expresses concerns over the government's handling of the Guatemalan claim to Belize. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories coming up after these messages. The Belize Tire Depot, your one-stop destination. What you will find is a first-class selection of solid, dependable, quality products from the names you can trust. We carry a full line of urea and Shortec tools and equipment to meet every need, from light maintenance around the house to heavy-duty fieldwork. Our tire workshop features the full array of Pirelli, Nexon, and Nankang tires for every vehicle and any terrain. Our trained technicians' number one priority is to ensure you and your family's safety and security on the road. It's all here at the Belize Tire Depot. From reliable equipment, world-class time-tested tires, to sturdy, durable tools. Merchandise that's built to last with quality guaranteed. Are you always on the go? Tired of missing your favorite games while they're actually being played? Watch your games and sporting events live with Central TV and Internet's incredible My TV. Simply log on to www.mitv.bz to get easy access to 25 channels, no matter where you are. With Central TV and Internet's My TV, you're always in the game. More vehicle owners are switching to the PureGuard line of motor oils and with good reason. PureGuard comes in different grades and specifications. It carries the API certification and comes with the Westrack stamp of approval, guaranteed to make your engine run cleaner and longer, up to 10,000 miles. With PureGuard motor oil, your engine will have less wear and tear, give you maximum performance on the road, and give your vehicle better fuel mileage. PureGuard, good quality, affordable oil. Distributed exclusively by West Track Limited, with branches in Spanish Lookout, Belmopan, Belize City, and Orange Walk Town. <laughs> Here now is the news in details. The People's Coalition of Cayo today handed over a diesel generator to the San Ignacio Police Formation. A brief ceremony was held at the station this morning where the chairman of the PCC, Eduardo Dito Juan, officially handed over the generator to the new officer commanding San Ignacio Police, Superintendent Andrew Ramirez. Guest speaker at the handing over was the past vice president of the PCC, Julian Sherard, who was instrumental in getting the equipment moved to San Ignacio and installed at the police station compound. Julian, what does it mean to the PCC uh, to be able to reach this milestone where you're handing over this generator to the police department? It's fantastic. You know, we worked for years and years with the U.S. Embassy, with Mr. Barry Cuthbertson and the various um, ambassadors that we've had uh, now uh, and and also with the one now and uh, with Mr. Gibson who's now taken uh, Barry Cuthbertson's place, it's it's a dream come come true. We have tried for years to, to get some sort of backup generator. You know when when the rare case of hurricane or some kind of emergency, the power goes down. Of course, that's when you need it most. And so by having this machine here and it's a good quality, it's it's a that has very few hours on it. Um, so with this. It'll help a lot to keep the police functioning, uh, especially in those times of, of, of natural disaster and, and such. Getting this generator took a community um, effort. It was, just wasn't the work of one man. You were a guest speaker, and uh, you're accredited with, with actual 
it took a community effort. Well, the People's Coalition is certainly a community effort. Um, I can tell you that where the generator came from was actually, you know, when you're networking, when you're at a party or whatever, and you're talking to somebody. And Barry and I were at a party years ago and, and talking about this and that. And I thought, I said, Barry, we really need, you know, some equipment at the San Ignacio police station. We need a generator. What can you do? Well, we, we've got some stuff in the pipeline, but a generator, that's a tall one. And But from time to time, I'd remind him that we're looking for a generator. Uh, and then one day, you know, we got a quote from Benny's for a generator, and we got a quote from some other company, I think in Spanish Lookout Universal. And we were really pushing hard. And, and sometimes when you push hard, the stars align or whatever you believe, and things happen. And that's exactly what happened with this here. One more time, I contacted Barry, and I said, well, you know, can you help out? financially towards us buying a generator and he, right then he said you know what we'll shut down one of the buildings and we've got the spare generator we'll let you have it and so Greg Shropshire bless his heart he's been one of our, our main, um, uh, financial donor go and uh, he volunteered I lent him the trailer I didn't have the time to go but he went out picked up the generator brought it back to my place it sat there for almost a year while we got everything in order all the wiring construction and all of that uh, and then the other day we got it moved over here um, I take my hat off to, to Dito Juan he's really been pushing hard uh, to Albert Moore who's our prior chairman he did a wonderful job as well and to all in the community who've worked so hard to, to make this what it is so coalition and where we're at today is certainly a effort and, and and hats off to the police department as well because it's we wouldn't be anywhere. Obviously, it's a community effort, and the police are part of the community. There are police. On hand to receive the diesel generator was the new officer commanding San Ignacio Police Superintendent Andrew Ramirez. It is his first day in the new posting, and Superintendent Ramirez told reporters that the gesture is most welcome. Well, it's uh, an issue that has been overdue for the police station. Um, the police department has been the lead security agency, but yet it's the, this one is one of the least secure. We don't have fences. Whenever there's backup, there's no communication. So the, the gift that was gifted to the Sainasa police station was a well-deserved gift, and I will try my utmost best to make it in the top shape of that, that it should be. As the officer commanding, um, do you uh, plan and continue this collaboration working relationship with the People's Coalition? Most definitely, Patrick. Um, I just want to retain that today is my first day I'm doing the handing over, taking over from Superintendent Thompson. But I am guided by the four primary functions of the police department. The first one is the protection of life and property, life being irreplaceable. The second is the prevention and detection of crime. The third is the apprehension and prosecution of offenders. And the fourth would be the preservation of life. So we must be guided that it is necessary to be working with any person or any entity that has the community police aspect as their main objective. So the police coalition of Cayo, I have heard a lot of good news about it. I heard Mr. Julian Shepard's speech very um, touching to me because it was because of crime that there was a compelling need to get the, the PCC that is there. And I'm not here to be part of any situation to, to destroy the PCC. I will give my hundred and plus percent to continue working along with these individuals. As soon as I'm through over, taking over, I will be meeting with key individuals, exchanging information, emails, cell phone, and I'll also invite to be part of this information sharing. So as soon as I'm selling, I invite each and every individual who has a meaningful about the sign now Santa Elena, especially the ship, be free from crime. The People's Coalition of Cayo meets regularly at the San Ignacio Police Station. The donation of the diesel generator is not the first contribution that the group has made towards assisting the police to maintain law and order in the Twin Towns. Both sides today pledge to continue working together. The San Ignacio Santa Elena police formation has a new officer commanding. Superintendent Andrew Ramirez today took up his appointment, succeeding Superintendent Dinsdale Thompson. Superintendent Ramirez says he will be meeting with the officers under his command in the coming days to discuss the way forward. First of all, I'm Patrick, I do not compete myself with any persons. I have my own way working 
and I'm scheduling, I have scheduled a general meeting, rank and file, Friday. Because as leadership change, everybody, most people are anxious as to what would be the direction. My direction is just working along with the community. So if one or two bad apples, as they normally say, if these individuals broke me, then they have to remove themselves from being that bad apple or that person that the car police do not give a, a do not have any concern about their irregular behavior. I have to also admit the fact that there is no formation in the police, no, no police department worldwide that is there have to be a bad apple amongst because the police is the reflection of the community. So in really back to your there will be a change. No, I have my own way and I compete as to how I manage. Now that meeting is Will you also be meeting with the community? You're meeting with the rank and file department. When will you plan a, maybe a public meeting to get the input of the people you are overseeing? Yes, Patrick. Um, when I this morning earlier, upon reporting for office this morning, I spoke to my deputy, ESP Raymond Norez. Uh, he has been doing a very splendid job, but he has, um, it, there has been arrangement to have a tongue meeting on foot. Because I want to say like this, that each department suffers from internal and external problems. It, it might be sometimes vehicles, um, resources, external. Internal problems will have the ill-discipline. We have the vehicles that really do not give the, the service to the community. So should be. They are mandated to do it. So some of these things, um, we have to remove ourselves that we cry on it dead hearts every time, vehicles, vehicles, vehicles. Because we do not show the community that we want to make a difference. We will continue um, crying out loud about vehicles, vehicles. We can do things without vehicles sometimes. We just have to be very innovative. Superintendent Ramirez says that uh, the general public will also have easy access to his office once he is properly settled in within the next two weeks. Yes, Patrick. And what happened? Uh, based on my experience, members of the public, whenever they have certain situation, they call the commanding officer to, to, to listen to their concern. Um, I encourage individuals that they can come into my office, but I think if they can just bear at least a week or two because there's some renovation I want to, I want to do. For example, one of the things that I'm look to my headquarters is to have a glass door, Bordeaux that is presented so the officer doesn't see anybody unless, unless that person comes in. And likewise with time, I would be recommending that a glass door be on the front side, which would be the road, so that again, rather than I walk through the station, the member of the public can sit until they get the opportunity to speak with the commanding officer. That is my um, goal here that I come for, is to door and speak with people individually so that um, I want to work with them and solve their problem. If possible. Of course, the financial problem, that's another issue, but most is crime, crime situation. And definitely, I want to be very... Well, on behalf of my colleagues, the other members of the media present, to say, welcome to Kaya, welcome to San Ignacio. Thank you. Um, I just want to leave this interview by saying that I want to implore my office Two golden rules. People look, look at it as probably the, 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 the testament or the command. But do unto others as you like them do unto you. Love thy neighbors as you love thyself. If each officer can work under these two key rules, I think we can have a police department. And as I say, I challenge the Kyopol um, environment that if they work in the best, I want to see this experience here in Sinaso. And I really want to know if indeed they work. Prior to his transfer to San Ignacio, Superintendent Ramirez served as the officer commanding the Corozal Police. The National Trade Union Congress of Belize today issued a media statement expressing disappointment at the way government has been handling the Guatemalan claim to Belizean territory. The Congress of the NTUCB says that it is of the opinion that government's responses to recent incidents involving Guatemala have been a far cry from the assertive, vehement stance that would clearly and unequivocally demonstrate the nation's intent to defend its national and sovereign integrity. 
The NTUCB statement says that recent government responses appear, quote, to be coming from a position of inexcusable weakness, end of quote, and that Belize continues to suffer on demeaning, one demeaning blow of disrespect after another from Guatemala. Regarding recent media comments at the end of last week by Foreign Minister Wilfred Ellington, the NTUCB says that it is unfortunate that the people of Belize only became aware of what it considers as the government's official position regarding the Guatemalan claim through Minister Ellington due to prodding from the media. This, the NTUB, NTUCB says, clearly exposes government's determination to hold back information from the Belizean people. One case in point the NTUCB makes is when Minister Ellington keeps saying that, quote, we are on our way to the ICJ, end quote, as if it is a done deal. The NTUCB says uh, that uh, this is, quote, connivingly misleading, or that should be connivingly leading, unquote, in light of the pending referendum in which the people of both Belize and Guatemala would decide on whether or not to take the claim by Guatemala to the International Court of Justice for final resolution. The NTUCB says uh, statements by Minister Ellington are implying that there is already a yes vote when that is not the case. According to the NTUCB, it is calling for, quote, full disclosure on whether it is the GOB's position to keep speaking on the ICJ referendum as a done deal, end of quote. The next issue taken up by the NTUCB is the confidence-building measures brokered by the Organization of American States. The group says it is of the view that these measures are not designed to build the confidence of Belizeans, but rather, Guatemala seems to be the only one getting confidence. The final issue addressed by NTUCB in their statement is Guatemala's objection to Belize constructing a forward operating base on Sarstoon Island well within Belizean territory. In the words of the NTUCB, let the construction begin. NTUCB says it demands that government disregards any instruction or suggestion from Guatemala to halt construction of the forward operating base. This is Belizean territory and Guatemala must respect it, says the NTUCB statement. The release ends by calling on all Belizeans to, Belizeans to learn more about the issues surrounding the adverse claim by Guatemala, which it says has been testily increasing its claims. Belizeans are being called upon by the NTUCB to unite in demanding that our government not, not cower to Guatemala and for everyone to throw their support behind the government to continue construction of the forward operating base on Sarstoon Island. Funeral service for fallen police officer Carlos Orio was held this morning in Belmopan. Detective Orio, who was assigned to the special branch in Belmopan, died on Thursday night when the car he was driving went out of control and slammed into a lamp post on the Iguana Creek Road, heading to Spanish Lookout. Family and friends were joined by the Minister of National Security, John Saldivar, and the top brass of the police department this morning for the service of thanksgiving for the life of P.C. Orio at the Our Lady of Guadalupe Co-Cathedral before his burial at the cemetery in Belmopan. At the time of his death on Thursday night, P.C. Orio, a veteran of 12 years in the police department, had been recommended for promotion to the rank of corporal. Meanwhile, the police department is also mourning the death of another officer. Sergeant Concepcion Cal, stationed in San Antonio, Toledo, died over the weekend following a long ailment with diabetes. Funeral arrangements are being made for Sergeant Cal, and we understand that he will be buried on Wednesday. Prime Minister Dean Barrow has traveled to the United States on personal leave and will later go to Los Angeles, California for the opening of the Special World Games this weekend. The Prime Minister, accompanied by his wife Kim, left Belize on Sunday. 
They will attend the opening of the Special World Games, which runs from July 25th to August 2nd and brings together 6,500 athletes and 2,000 coaches representing 165 countries. An estimated half a million spectators are expected for the Games, which, are, which is billed as the largest sports and humanitarian event for 2015. Prime Minister Barrow is expected back in Belize on Wednesday of next week. During his absence, Deputy Prime Minister Gaspar Vega is acting Prime Minister. You are watching the 9 o'clock news. Coming up after the break, police investigate three murders over the weekend in the Belize district. We'll be right back. The Belize Tire Depot, your one-stop destination. What you will find is a first-class selection of solid, dependable, quality products from the names you can trust. We carry a full line of urea and Shortec tools and equipment to meet every need, from light maintenance around the house to heavy-duty fieldwork. Our tire workshop features the full array of Pirelli, Nexon, and Nankang tires for every vehicle and any terrain. Our trained technician's number one priority is to ensure you and your family's safety and security on the road. It's all here at the Belize Tire Depot. From reliable equipment, world-class time-tested tires, to sturdy, durable tools. Merchandise that's built to last with quality guarantee. More vehicle owners are switching to the PureGuard line of motor oils and with good reason. PureGuard comes in different grades and specifications. It carries the API certification and comes with the Westrack stamp of approval, guaranteed to make your engine run cleaner and longer, up to 10,000 miles. With PureGuard motor oil, your engine will have less wear and tear, give you maximum performance on the road, and give your vehicle better fuel mileage. PureGuard, good quality, affordable oil. Distributed exclusively by West Track Limited, with branches in Spanish Lookout, Belmopan, Belize City, and Orange Walk Town. Are you always on the go? Tired of missing your favorite games while they're actually being played? Watch your games and sporting events live with Central TV and Internet's incredible My TV. Simply log on to www.mitv.bz to get easy access to 25 channels, no matter where you are. With Central TV and Internet's My TV, you're always in the game. You too can ride off into the sunset. Milan motorbikes are very affordable. There's a high availability for parts and a wide selection of models to choose from. My Milan, my bike. Available countrywide. Welcome back to the 9 o'clock news. Police on Saturday reported the discovery of a body near the bridge in Bermuda Landing Village in the Belize district. Police issued a release on Saturday saying they believed that the body, which was burned beyond recognition, may be that of 28-year-old Kelvin Usher, a resident of Belize City. Police say that Usher's common-law wife reported him missing on Saturday afternoon, three hours after the burnt body was found. The common-law wife told police that Usher left home on the night of Thursday, July 16th, and has not been seen or heard from since. Police say that around 10.43 on Saturday morning, they visited an area about 400 feet past the Bermuda Landing Bridge where they found the charred remains. Investigations continue. The second major weekend incident was a murder in Lord's Bank Village. The victim has been identified as a 30-year-old Titus Blancano, a resident of the Spanish town area. Police say that when they visited the area around 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, they found Blancano's body with what appears to be a stab wound to the left shoulder. Initial investigations revealed that Blancano was involved in a misunderstanding with his common-law wife, who allegedly inflicted the stab wound to his shoulder. Police say that they have retrieved a knife believed to have been used in the fatal incident. 
They have detained the 24-year-old common-law wife of Blancano pending investigations. Police in Hattieville Village in the Belize District are investigating a murder in the quiet community. The victim has been identified as 47-year-old Steve Munnings. Police say that on Sunday afternoon, they were called to a yard on Mybridge Street in Hattieville where they found Munnings fatally injured. Initial investigations revealed that a 26-year-old woman was at a friend's house in the village when she was accosted and assaulted by her ex-common-law husband. Police say that the 31-year-old man put a knife to the woman's throat demanding her house keys. When she told her, her attacker, that Munnings had the keys, the man allegedly went to Munnings' house where an altercation ensued, during which Munnings was fatally wounded. Police have since detained the 31-year-old man pending a murder investigation. Authorities say they have recovered a piece of 2x4 and a knife believed to have been used in the murder of Steve Munnings. Two cases of aggravated assault have been reported within a half hour of each other in the Belmopan area on Sunday night. The first incident, around 11 o'clock last night, has left 23-year-old Moses Ayala hospitalized with a stab wound to the upper part of his back. Ayala told police that he and another man were accosted by a trio of men last night who demanded money. Ayala said that when the alleged robbers were told that they had no money, one of the men stabbed Ayala to the back and then fled the scene. The second incident happened around 11.25 last night in Maya Mopan. 27-year-old Samuel Yashkal was stabbed to his abdomen. When police found him, Yashkal was bleeding profusely and he was rushed to the Western Regional Hospital in Belmopan. Yaskal was able to tell police that he was walking on Halakte Street on his way home when he was accosted by a man of Hispanic descent who demanded that he sell the gold chain he was wearing. When Yaskal said no, his attacker stabbed him in the upper right upper side of his abdomen. Police investigations of both incidents continue. There was a chopping incident on Friday night in San Lazaro village in the Orange Walk district. 21-year-old Harrison Diaz was chopped in the head, left ear, and left hand. 19-year-old Fernando Carrillo was chopped to the right hand. Police say their initial investigation reveals that around 10 o'clock on Friday night, Diaz and Carrillo were at a shop in the village when they were attacked by a man wielding a machete known to them only as Cuchillo. Investigations continue. In Belize City, a drive-by shooting has left a man hospitalized in critical but stable condition. 23-year-old Sheldon Greenwich was standing on the side of Police Street around 2 o'clock on Sunday morning when he was shot in the back allegedly by a man who was riding as a passenger on a motorcycle. Police investigations continue. Earlier in the newscast, we told you about the National Trade Union Congress's criticism of Minister of Foreign Affairs Wilfred Ellington for comments made about recent incidents involving Guatemala. Tonight, the Prensa Latina is reporting that Minister Ellington is on an official visit to Mexico. Ellington was welcomed to Mexico City by his counterpart, Jose Antonio Meade. According to Prensa Latina, during the visit to Mexico, Minister Ellington will sign agreements on maritime cooperation, transport, energy, intellectual property, consumer protection, health care, and the environment. Minister Ellington is also scheduled to be the guest speaker at a forum titled Mexico Belize Outlook for Bilateral Relations. There was a protest this afternoon in Belize City involving members of the Belize Energy Workers Union. The protest took place during the lunch hour and the BEWU says the picket was over a pending revised partnership collective agreement with the state-owned utility company. Today, BEL issued a press release saying it is aware of the protest by the Belize Energy Workers Union which started today and is expected to continue for another couple of days. 
The BEL release says that negotiations on the revised partnership collective agreement started in November of last year and has now reached the point where it entered mediation at the end of last month after the negotiating teams were unable to arrive at an agreement on salary negotiations and benefits. The BEL statement says that at the commencement of the negotiations, the union was proposing salary and benefits package that would have amounted to an increase of 90% of salary. That offer was rejected by BEL. BEWU suggested a revised proposal which suggested a 62% increase in salaries and benefits. A counter-proposal by BEL was for a 34% increase and the BEL statement says that the union walked away from the negotiations table. The BEL statement ends by saying that the company recognizes that the essential service it provides uh, to the public requires a high regard for the national interest of the country. Hence, the request to move to mediation of the revised PCA in an effort to prevent any undue impact of services to consumers. BEL says it remains committed to working towards a revised PCA and that will result in an agreement that is beneficial to all stakeholders. The news on the national channel. Belize Camping Experience would like to thank everyone who makes BCE successful and meaningful. To our summer camp supporters and volunteers who came from communities across Belize. To all who supported, contributed, and volunteered with our Harvest for Kids project. Funds raised through last year's rice and corn crop will help maintain BCE's children's programs through 2015. You can also support BCE by buying your bag of Circle R Premium Rice with the Harvest for Kids logo, now in a new package. Together we can and will make a positive difference in this beautiful country of Belize. More vehicle owners are switching to the PureGuard line of motor oils and with good reason. PureGuard comes in different grades and specifications. It carries the API certification and comes with the Westrack stamp of approval, guaranteed to make your engine run cleaner and longer, up to 10,000 miles. With PureGuard Motor Oil, your engine will have less wear and tear, give you maximum performance on the road, and give your vehicle better fuel mileage. PureGuard, good quality, affordable oil. Distributed exclusively by West Track Limited, with branches in Spanish Lookout, Belmopan, Belize City, and Orange Walk Town. Patience. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. In weather news, mainly fair and warm conditions are expected over the next couple of days. The general forecast for Belize and her coastal waters is for partly cloudy skies tonight. Tomorrow will be mostly sunny and warm. Little or no rainfall is expected. Winds over the open sea and along the coast will be easterly to southeasterly at 10 to 20 knots. The sea state will be choppy to moderate. Low temperatures tonight will be around 81 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 75 degrees Fahrenheit inland, and 70 degrees Fahrenheit up in the hills. High temperatures on Tuesday will be 88 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 96 degrees Fahrenheit inland, and 82 degrees Fahrenheit up at the higher elevations. The tides. A high tide occurs at 10 minutes past 1 o'clock in the morning. A low tide follows at 27 minutes past 7 o'clock also in the morning. The sun will rise at 28 minutes past 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. It will set at 6.30 in the evening. The extended forecast valid through to Wednesday afternoon is for mainly fair and warm weather with only isolated showers or thunderstorms developing. And that is a look at the weather with information provided by forecaster Michael Gentle at the Belize Weather Bureau. And for the latest on the hurricane season, here is the tropical weather update. Well, here's something you don't see every day. 
in Southern California in July. Rain and a whole lot of it. Look at that couch. Yeah, it wasn't only couches. I mean, cars. This was some pretty serious flooding. Moreno Valley, California. Some video there. You can see how fast that water's moving. In some spots, it was moving fast enough to even take out bridges. That's part of I-10, Desert Center, California. Yeah. Crazy stuff, and of course it was kind of the perfect blend of things coming together to make for uh, that type of rain event. It's not something that happens all the time in July. We've got a strong El Nino, we've got of course monsoon season, and the remains of Dolores that was once a hurricane that was of course off the coast pumping in a lot of moisture. Now, look, I know it's always good to get rain in this part of the country with how bad the drought's been, but you can see the ground's really not set up to handle it, so we do need it to kind of stop. And the good news is that it will tend to die down as we get into the middle part of the week. To end the news, here are the main points again. People's Coalition of Cayo makes donation to the San Ignacio Police. New officer commanding takes over at the San Ignacio Police Station. And the NTUCB expresses concerns over the government's handling of the Guatemalan claim to Belize. With the headlines, we end this edition of the 9 o'clock news. Thank you for joining us. I am Patrick Jones. Have a good evening and a good night.